face a kind of decision, what we call a trade-off, with what they do with their energy and the matter that they use for growth. They can invest that energy and matter in more growth, which can be useful for getting more and more matter and energy, which we call a competitive strategy. They can invest that matter and energy within their tissues to support metabolism, to make sure that metabolism always works, even in difficult moments. Or they can choose to invest mainly in reproduction, so that they can survive when the environment is too difficult to live in. And this means that most organisms um, have what we call a strategy, a way of investing their resources between one of these three extremes. What's really interesting for us now, uh, what we're starting to understand, is how to measure this and how to use this to understand the distribution of organisms, how they live together, the basis of biodiversity, and look at this from a functional perspective, how things work. Well, we're trying to understand the limits of survival, of how organisms can live together and um, I think one of the useful things about coming here and comparing it with my situation in Italy is that I see a range of different ecosystems which have uh, different characteristics, different functional characteristics, different organisms that survive in different ways. We have some extreme habitats which are extremely stressful, very difficult to live in and we have habitats where there's a lot of competition between uh, plants and I think that by contrasting these different habitats we get a good idea of the general rules about plant survival and coexistence and biodiversity. While I was thinking about the general principles of how organisms survive, I started thinking about what life is and I read some very interesting papers and had some of my own thoughts too. The molecular storm is the fact that all molecules and atoms that surround us every day are actually moving. They're, ag they're agitated by thermal energy, by heat. And they're wiggling and jiggling and moving, but they don't do anything. So this is the molecular storm. It's the, the furious movement of matter in all of the, the universe around us. The thing that defines life, living processes, is that the molecules are constructed in a particular way that this movement, this thermal agitation, makes them move in one direction. And if they can move in one direction, they can do things, they can do work. And this is the basis of living processes within cells. So the molecular storm is the force that moves things, and the uh, directional motion is the motion of molecules in one direction to do work within living cells. That's what makes us uh, a rare and special manifestation of life in the universe. Well, one of the things that I argued is that because thermal agitation is something that you can find around any star in the universe, that these processes of pushing life forwards are probably universal. It's highly likely, uh, we know that there are lots of, of planets around lots of star systems which could uh, hold life. And it's highly likely that the kind of thermal energy is correct for life on many of these planets. But we know from our planet that our own evolution has taken basically over four billion years from single-celled organisms in the sea to the kind of organisms that can think, that can build a spaceship and, uh, and have civilization. Uh, so what I argued is that life, simple life in the universe, is probably quite common. But civilizations are probably very, very rare. And that means that we are probably very, very special. A very special manifestation of life in the universe.